そのつ,つまりあのえ,えっとその、uh, Hey guys, what's up? It's the Culture Detective here investigating your favorite animes and today I'm going to do another anime review on the latest 86 season 1 part 1 So originally I actually didn't plan to review this at all because I recently finished 86 season 1 part 1 and by the time I finished it season 2 One part two is still airing, so I thought, okay, maybe, maybe I should just wait until season one part two finishes so that you know I could review the entire 86 season one as a whole. But I looked at the schedule, apparently, 86 season one part two began airing on October 3rd, and let's assume that there are 12 episodes in season one part two. And if that's the case, then season one is going to end at the very end of December. And by then, I will have no time to do anything, including reviewing things on YouTube. So, you know what? Screw it. I'm going to review it here now. So, 86 is a light novel written by Asato Asato and illustrated by Shirabi. And then it is adapted into an anime by A1 Pictures. And it is a very recent anime. It aired like three months ago, maybe four months ago. And it is political. Ooh, a political anime. Ooh. And it is about how there are two nations, Giadia and Saint Magnolia. Giadia is a very powerful nation who has these. Robot AIs which fight for the nation instead of using actual people, actual human beings, actual soldiers. So, with this invention of AI soldiers and fighting robots, the nation of Giadia, hopefully I'm pronouncing it right, it has a really weird name, Giadia? Giadia? Anyways, this nation decided to expand its territory by using these drones and, and AIs. Except this nation isn't actually the nation that our main character lives in. Our main character is Lena. And she is in a different nation called the Republic of Saint Magnolia. And the Republic of Saint Magnolia is. Kind of like an allegory for Nazi Germany, where it is a country that is at war with Giadia. And it is a country that is originally inhabited by a lot of white people with white hair. Or、uh, by white people, I mean people with white hair. And these, this ethnicity is called Alba. And of course, after this nation had opened up, there are a lot of immigrants that went into this nation. Immigrants with other colored hairs black hair, blonde hair, brown hair,、uh, and so on and so forth. Green hair and red hair. And in the allegory, they are sort of a metaphor for Jews. So, what happened is that this nation passed a law and deemed these. People with colored hairs as non humans, and they called them pigs. And then they drafted them to fight in the front lines against the AI robots of Giadia. And everybody in that nation right now, everybody in Saint Magnolia right now with white hair, they think that those colored hair people, they call them the 86, they are not humans. And if they die, it doesn't matter. And so everybody's kind of racist towards this thing. And, and it's not just racist on a personal level, like, oh, I hate people with colored hair. This is racist on a national level. Like, the, the government is actually telling everyone that these people are not humans. And so we have an incredibly interesting premise. I really love it when animes get political. And. I don't know why. Maybe it's because of Attack on Titan. Recently, I watched and reviewed Attack on Titan's latest season, and oh my god, I love it a lot. The way Attack on Titan tackles politics is so interesting, unique, and nuanced because it doesn't just say, ooh, 
government bad, people good. It's actually so much more complex than that. What if the government is trying to do something but is using a uh, not so ethical measure? What if the people are right but they are resisting the government with also unethical measures? What if there is another government who is trying to counter another government and with unethical measures? Then who is right? Who is wrong? What is right and wrong? What is ethics? And Attack on Titan tackles that with such nuance and complexity. I actually really, really love it. Now back to 86. Uh, let's talk about the OP and the ED. The OP is uh, not so good. I like the song. Don't get me wrong, I like the song. But I just don't think an upbeat math rock song matches with the overall tone of the anim of the anime really well. Uh, the ED is kind of fine. It's just fine. And, and I don't like the animation for the opening. It's your average people fighting, people acting serious compilation type OP. It's not creative at all. I would rather have the OP theme song be like a, like more grandiose and orchestral. Maybe sound more like a national anthem. Sound more anxiety inducing. That would be way better. Anyways, this anime is not without its flaws. First of all, not a lot happens. The entire season 1 part 1 is 11 episodes long and it basically covers the entire volume 1 which has 11 chapters. So one chapter per episode. That is a little slow. That is a little slow. And even so, not a lot actually happens. We have our main character and she is assigned to be a handler. And what a handler does essentially is they handle a group of color hair people units. A group of 86s and tell them, oh, fight here, fight there. And she, of course, being the main character, she is sympathetic towards these other people, these 86 people and she realized that the nation is really really racist and corrupt and she wants to make a change but since she is powerless since she's just a teenage girl she doesn't really do anything because she can't do anything and that's basically the entire season one part one she isn't able to do anything she keeps trying to do something small for the for the team of people that she's handling from time to time, like trying to speak to them through uh, this uh, device called the para raid, which is stuck to the ear, and uh, she sometimes tries to uh, smuggle like fireworks and give them fireworks so that uh, the people in that team can celebrate, and that's kind of it. There really isn't much else. The story actually gets a little repetitive because we realize that this team of people they are going to die one way or the other because they are sent to the battlefield and the AI fighting robots of Giadia are so much more powerful than humans so they know they're gonna die so there would be battles they would go into a battle and a character dies and then we have a very sad moment and then it kind of happens again midway through the anime so far and similar things happen and then we have another battle uh, towards the end of season one part one and something similar happens and it just kind of happens again and again and again without much in terms of dynamic and progression and it isn't like the anime shows it and tells the story as if it's this perpetual hell where everybody's just psychologically suffering I mean yes they are but the anime doesn't really make an effort to do that the characters are kind of bland too. Our main character, Lena, is a really nice girl who's really emotional. I get it, but nothing else. The team of people are just like kind, cool people. Nothing else. The side character called Undertaker, aka the Reaper, aka Shin, uh, he is the leader of the team of 86 who is fighting the uh, AI robot and he's supposed to be the more interesting character but I just don't think he's that interesting or anything 
there are also a lot of cheesy moments in the anime, uh, like uh, when you know uh, Shin wanted to kill his brother because okay, one thing about Giadia is that if a person dies but their brain is not blown out, Giadia steals the dead person's brain and somehow processes it into an AI. So that means one of the AI robots is going to be uh, an actual person's brain but dead soulless and so Shin's brother is dead but his brain is being used so Shin has to find his brother's brain and, and, and kill it and so there's a moment where Shin was so close to doing that and she just turns psycho and she's, he starts laughing hysterically which I think is a little cheesy that being said though I think the last three episodes are really good i like the episode where the team sort of travels into the unknown it feels like a new era it feels like a new chapter it feels like the story is expanding and it's really exciting i like that i also like the last two episodes which is a refreshing change of pace where there is not a lot of action but more wholesome interaction in a sense that we are exploring some new territories quite literally in this world and i kind of like that there's a time jump in the beginning of the second last episode aka episode 10 and time jumps are a really powerful tool and i don't think the story kind of realized that because the time jump happens yet it feels as though nothing has changed but I don't mind it all that much knowing how episode 11 ends, which is brutal. It is a brutal ending, and I don't know if it's actually that way. If you've seen the episode, you know what I'm talking about. I don't know if that's actually the case, but it leaves a huge cliffhanger, and I appreciate that. So, yeah, um, I feel like this is my most negative non-negative review of an anime because I do like this anime but it's just not as good as some people make it out to be and while I really like the premise I like the politics of this anime I think the characters and the stories could have been more interesting and also this anime does a lot of spoon feeding oh yeah the nation is racist the government is corrupt and our main character is a nice girl and it keeps on spoon feeding us and it's not the most annoying part of the anime in my opinion but it can still get a little annoying from time to time but still i like the final episodes and i think it has a lot of potential 86 season 1 part 1 is uh in my opinion a strong 6 to a light 7 out of 10 so have you watched 86 for one to 10 which you rate a like like and subscribe if you want more and thanks for watching i'm gonna be watching and reviewing neko monogatari kudo tomorrow so that's cool.